Welcome to Attack of the Poison Outputs. In today's video, I'm going to present to you the definitive guide as to how to buy Monero as of November 2024. So if you're new to Monero, you don't know where to start, this is the video for you. All right, so starting off, here are the different ways that you can buy XMR. And they each have pros and cons, and we're gonna go through all of these in detail, but this is just a summary. So starting off, we have peer-to-peer -peer exchanges. And with these P2P exchanges, uh, they can either be decentralized or centralized. Um, what's great about these is all you need is fiat, and then you can buy Monero directly using Zelle or Cash App or something, whatever the other person is selling Monero for. And there will be no record of you on a KYC exchange. And just as a review, KYC stands for Know Your Customer. And those are any exchanges that take your identification. So we highly recommend trying to use a peer-to-peer -peer service as your primary way of getting Monero. We then have coin swap services. It's exactly what it sounds like. You start with one cryptocurrency and you swap it for Monero. Um, again, there's pros and cons of this. The main con being you have to get the cryptocurrency before you can get the Monero. And then finally, we have KYC exchanges. Again, we don't recommend this from a privacy standpoint, but from a convenience standpoint, it's obvious why people use KYC. Uh, Monero currently is on Kraken as the major uh, KYC exchange, but I think it's only available in the United States now. So the KYC options are dwindling um, and probably won't even be around in the future. However, you can also just buy a different cryptocurrency such as Bitcoin or Litecoin on a KYC exchange and then just swap that into Monero. And in fact, that is the main way people are getting Monero today. More on that later. Now, before we start, I do want to give a shout out to one exchange that is unfortunately no longer with us, and that is Local Monero. Um, they shut down in May, probably for regulatory reasons, uh, but that was an example of a centralized peer to peer exchange. It was a centralized escrow service and you connected with somebody else and you bought Monero with fiat or you could swap crypto for it, but you're dealing directly with somebody else. It was a really great system and it's unfortunate that it no longer exists. And um, you know, if it did exist, it would be the first option that I would recommend, but they're no longer with us. And what do we have to do? Well, we have to adapt. So we're gonna start with peer-to-peer -peer decentralized exchanges. And the first one and arguably the most reputable is BISC. Uh, BISC has been um, working now since 2016. It's got good liquidity and it checks all the boxes of what we want, right? Non-KYC, it's over Tor. You can do fiat to crypto. The problem though is it's Bitcoin based. So you have to onboard on the Bitcoin before you can swap into Monero. However, there's another annoyance here and it's that you have to put a security deposit in Bitcoin before you can even onboard into Monero. So there's like a chicken and egg problem where essentially you need cryptocurrency before you can even use BISC. It should also be noted that BISC is transferring over to BISC2, which is a new protocol that they built. I have not personally used it. Uh, what's important to bring up though is that there is an option to onboard directly to Bitcoin without putting a security deposit down, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, again, I haven't used it yet, but if you are liking BISC, um, you may want to look into that because uh, I think within the short term, they will be transferring all their order books over to BISC2, and um, that is going to take over. And then you'll have that option to just onboard directly into Bitcoin with fiat. We now have Haveno Reto, which is essentially a fork of BISC. Um, this is also a peer-to-peer -peer decentralized exchange. There's no central entity here, right? It's exactly like BISC. The difference though, is it's based on Monero. So that security deposit I mentioned that you have to put down in Bitcoin, well, in this case, you put it down in Monero, which is obviously really annoying. But everything else uh, is basically the same as BISC in that it's non-KYC, decentralized, it's over Tor. Um, 
the governance structure is a little different where they're all the team is anonymous essentially whereas with bisc it's all open and structured so there is some concern that maybe they aren't as reputable um, and also haveno just has lower liquidity uh, however it has grown quite noticeably even within the past couple of weeks um, this has only launched in april of 2024 so it's still pretty new um, and the growth has been pretty noticeable so definitely check this out if you're interested and uh, being an early adopter is definitely a feather on your cap so um, you know get in early while people still are learning about it and then hey you can promote it to other newbies as well so here are some peer-to-peer -peer options without xmr so with these websites you can use fiat and you can buy a cryptocurrency and then with that cryptocurrency later on you can swap it into xmr um, so that is convenient and there are a bunch of different sites for this some of them require kyc such as paxful the others that i listed here like local coin swap i believe they don't uh full disclosure i have not used any of these i have used bisque and haveno but i have not used any of these websites so you know uh, do your own research on that but they are out there and yeah if they're non-kyc it's the same thing you can use zelle or you know uh, venmo as long as you agree with the other person as to the method there's escrow involved and uh yeah it's cool uh the problem so premiums can be high on on these peer-to-peer -peer sites they are they are in the clear net so you know in my opinion they will be targeted by regulations so you might not want to be dependent on these sites and um yeah i, I think really the biggest drawback is it's just not local monero like if you use local monero you would know what i'm saying i mean they were just a pillar of the monero community whereas these sites it's just they're just peer-to-peer -peer exchanges they're kind of you know they're kind of vanilla but they do work so now we get to coin swap services and as i've mentioned in previous videos this is really the new way that most people are acquiring monero today and the reason for this is because it is the path of least resistance it is super easy to do and um, these websites are extremely user friendly if you don't believe me put yourself in the shoes of somebody who is buying monero solely as a utility you don't care about price or anything like that right you've bought bitcoin in the past so now hey i can just buy bitcoin and then go to one of these websites and just swap it right into monero it just is an extra hop that they have to do but that's it once they get the monero they're all good you know wallets like cake wallet are super easy because the coin swap services are built into the wallet and cake wallet isn't the only one there's dozens of examples of this uh, you can go to a website like truckador you can swap from monero or whatever cryptocurrency you have into like hundreds of other cryptocurrencies um, it's crazy and it's pretty much instant so it's really no surprise that we've seen adoption on these grow over time so what's the problem well to actually get that initial cryptocurrency to swap into monero oftentimes people are using kyc the problem here is that you leave traces of metadata behind and that over time if you're not careful you can kind of piece together what somebody's doing later on i'm going to be looking at multiple stories of people who were using monero on darknet markets and later it was pieced together back to a kyc exchange oftentimes it was because they used bitcoin or transparent um, cryptocurrency and they were swapping in and out of monero but due to timing analysis they were able to figure it out but this is really a, a drawback of these swap sites and they are collecting data on people who are using them just read the policies on the websites of these swap exchanges they make it very clear that if they're subpoenaed they're giving that information over as they should right they're on the clear net so if you are using these sites just keep that in mind that you know if you are you know say donating to a cause that isn't you know allowed in your country this could come back to bite you if somebody is monitoring you know a coin swap site and you know they see your ip address visited at that site etc so now we get to a different type of swap service and these are atomic swaps now atomic swaps just to be clear are swaps that take place not by a centralized party the swap itself is something that can't be stopped 
because it's happening on that cryptocurrency, right? And because cryptocurrencies are these decentralized peer-to-peer -peer networks, it can't be stopped. Now, there are different types of atomic swaps. And uh, yeah, we're going to start with Unstoppable Swap. Now, this um, is a Bitcoin to Monero swap, but it is only Bitcoin to Monero. So you can't swap Monero into Bitcoin. It's only one way, okay? Um, but what's cool about it is if you do have Bitcoin, you can just send it right to Monero and you're not trusting a third party, which is pretty cool, right? You're just using Bitcoin and it's scripting and it's safe. And yeah, that's awesome. It has a GUI. It's easy to use. The adoption is growing. It's over Tor. Sounds awesome. On the roadmap, I do know that they are going to eventually implement Taproot. Um, and this is important for the Bitcoin privacy side. Still, it is a great option for people using Monero. And yeah, if you're looking for a coin swap service that is arguably safer from a privacy standpoint, and I, I would say definitely is safer, uh, you should check out Unstoppable Swap. It is growing. Um, and like I said, the GUI uh, is pretty easy to use. We also have Basic Swap. Um, now, this one I haven't used. I've talked to a couple people about it, and the, the opinions on it are mixed. The primary issue is that it is not user friendly. There's a lot of development going on right now to make it more user friendly. Uh, in fact, there was a CCS proposal that just went through, which I'm pretty uh, excited about. What's cool though is you can do a swap with another cryptocurrency. So you could go from Monero to Litecoin, for example. It's not just like with an unstoppable swap, Bitcoin to Monero. There's other options that you can do. One of the issues though, and I didn't write this down under the cons. I forgot to. Uh, you do have to download nodes for each of the coins you're swapping with, which is a pain. Uh, I've also read that the Windows version is considerably more buggy than the Linux version. I guess the Linux version has some scripts that you can run that have already been made. Um, if you go on the GitHub, you can see that. Uh, once you get it running, I've heard great reviews about how the interface looks. It's just getting it set up not too user friendly. So. If you're looking for more of a challenge and maybe you want to get in early to help people out, um, this is a great option. And, you know, I do see the adoption on this growing over time. Right now, though, it's not the best one to recommend, in my opinion, especially to newbies. Uh, we also have Trade Ogre, uh, known as Shrek Market for the real ones. Yeah, Trade Ogre, uh, I've used this actually a, kind of a lot. Um, it's just super easy. Um, it's it's essentially an exchange with an order book. It's got good liquidity. There's some lesser known cryptocurrencies on there. Actually, no, I've used Trade Ogre primarily to swap Monero with Wow Narrow. <laughs> that's actually it's my main trade on there. I think I have yeah, that's my main one on there. Um, but uh, no, it, it's it's reliable. I've used it a lot. Um, I did have an issue once, and there. Um, their support team, which was on Twitter, I think I had to message them. They responded like very quickly. So um, yeah, they, they um, actually are. It, it seems like a shady operation, but I've used this a lot in the past. So um, I don't know if you're inter if you're interested in the kind of order book vibe. Uh, Trade Ogre is nice, but yeah, the problem is it's centralized. And now we get to KYC platforms, and of course, uh, Kraken is the main one right now at least in the United States. I've already talked a lot about why KYC is bad, and it's because of all the metadata that you're giving away. Um, but there are some pros to it, I can't lie. Mainly the strong liquidity, it's instant. So the convenience is very strong here. And um, you know, if you find an exchange with a good rate, I can understand it. And and I don't you know like to stress this, but it is true. If you are somebody who is buying cryptocurrency as an investment, then you definitely should be using a KYC exchange. I mean, you're going to pay your taxes, right? You're going to pay your taxes and, um, you know, you'll just keep a log of all your transactions on that KYC exchange and you're fine, right? So there is a point to having KYC, even though I, like for me to recommend it to somebody, if I do say you can use KYC, I'm immediately going to follow that with, but you have to be careful. Why should you be careful? Well, I mean, all of the trades that you have made are going to be logged on that site. 
And if that data were to ever leak, well, you're giving away a lot of information about yourself. So people will know how much Monero you bought, when you bought it. They're going to have that dorky selfie that you took a while ago. You know what I'm saying? They're going to have your name, address, et cetera. So it's, it's not the best situation to get yourself into if you're putting in a lot of money on a KYC exchange. However, if you're just smart about it and you understand these issues, then analyze your threat model and you can use KYC. So I'm not going to be a total hardliner and say that you can never use KYC. I understand the point of it, but just be aware of the risks. And if you do recommend KYC to somebody, try to point out these risks, especially something like a $5 wrench attack, because these have happened and it's very scary. Um, or scammers. You know, if this data leaks, scammers are becoming more and more sophisticated and you can have your you can lose your crypto. And you know, frankly, most people using cryptocurrency are not that technologically savvy and will get tricked, is what it is. Now, here we have Sarai. And this is uh, currently in development. It's created by Luke Parker, who, uh, if you saw my last video, you would know uh, we are already indebted to him. But of course, he's also making what could be one of the uh, most important decentralized exchanges for Monero going forward. Uh, what's cool about this one is it uses uh, these liquidity pools of different cryptocurrencies instead of the you know, buyer-seller method that I've been showing you um, for a lot of these peer-to-peer -peer markets. So it's a kind of a different way of doing the exchange. Um, now, currently, it's not available. Uh, I think it's still in like testnet. They're kind of just working on it. Probably next year, maybe 2026, we'll see this in action. And I do expect it to be a really uh, great resource for people who do have cryptocurrency that are looking to onboard on a Monero. I already uh, kind of went over this. Um, what's the free market doing? They're buying uh, Bitcoin or Litecoin on a KYC exchange and swapping it into Monero. This isn't the ideal way from a threat model perspective, um, but it is what they're doing. But what about the future? And, you know, one thing I will say is I don't know how much longer these uh, coin swap services are going to be like easily available. There are, of course, complications with like legality in different jurisdictions. And I don't know if it can even be enforced. You know, these coin swap services are definitely a thorn in the sides of chain analysis because, you know, how are they monitoring all these different cryptocurrencies immediately swapping into these other cryptocurrencies? It's a total nightmare. So we'll see if they eventually start trying to go after these coin swap service operators. Um, I don't think they can, but at this point, they'll just make up some laws because that's what we've seen at least recently with, you know, Samurai Wallet or Tornado Cash. The rules don't really apply to them, right? And finally, uh, Kraken in the United States is very, very likely to delist uh, Monero uh, in the future. They've already delisted it from all of the European countries. Um, and the United States, I believe, is next on the chopping block. It's also possible this will never happen and Monero is going to be relisted on exchanges. Um, there's no way of knowing this. My assumption, though, is that regulations are going to get worse because that has been the trend for the past decade, right? Really since Bitcoin has been or has entered the mainstream. So prepare yourself for that. And how can you do that? By using the options I presented to you, especially the decentralized ones. The more you use these decentralized options, the stronger Monero becomes and the stronger the economy around Monero becomes. So anyway, that is the end of the video. We have now gone through all the different ways that you can get Monero. I think I covered everything at least. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for uh, watching. And uh, if you would like to donate, you can uh, send me some Neros. Helps uh, keep the channel running. And I'll see you guys next time.